Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Today, I want I received an article via email and I wanted to tell you ahead of time, um, I already had this video, I was, I was already doing this video earlier this morning and my doorbell rang and so I literally had to stop and that's why I'm just now getting this to you. But I received, I had received an email yesterday with, with an article and it really got my wheels turning to talk about something that I haven't really talked about yet. And that is the OTC market for cryptocurrencies. Now, OTC stands for over the counter for those of you that don't know. But before I go into that, I want to talk to you all about a problem that I've personally experienced in, uh, in trading, buying and selling, really just buying digital currencies digital assets on the exchanges, whether it's Binance or Bitstamp or any of these. Um, in the past, I've made some sizable purchases. Well, when you make a sizable purchase, you do run into, you can run into a liquidity problem where, where there's not enough sellers to, for me to buy or not enough buyers for me to sell. Well, that is a, real problem. We only, we are in a market that only has $210 billion in it. Okay. $210 billion in it. And so there is a large gap that, that temporarily, and I stress the word temporary, there's a large gap that temporarily separates the over the counter market and the exchanges, um, in, in much more liquid markets. Like for instance, uh, the New York Stock Exchange or the, the stock exchanges of the world. There is also an over the counter market in, in that, in those markets, the stock market. But the gap between the access for the wealthy and, and the access on the exchanges and the liquidity on the exchanges in crypto is a much wider gap because there's just not near the money. And that gap will close as there's more money uh, in the overall market. Um, it will close and get tighter and tighter because the, the, with, there's more liquidity. The more liquidity, the, the tighter everything gets. Well, in crypto, we've been living in a world in, where there's really two different, completely different worlds. And my point in telling you all of this is that we have not been accurately getting a picture of what our XRP and crypto is worth, especially in this year. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to go I'm, I, and I'm going to include the article that was sent to me yesterday that I believe that, that we are about to experience a, a slow, probably slow bridging of the gap between OTC and the, the real prices that are good prices high prices and the exchange market that we're seeing when we look at coin market cap every day. And I believe that your XRP and I believe that Bitcoin, I believe many of these things are valued much higher than what you see, because I believe that the market that there, we're not getting a true representation of the real price. And the other point I wanted to make before I go into any of this is that you and I, and many of us that were here early, an exit strategy that we have not talked about that is, is really the more that I think about it, a, a more, much more logical exit strategy for you and for I, if you have filled your bags over the last year or two, when the prices have, have been down, I believe that the OTC market, which if you have enough crypto you will have access to i believe that the otc market might very well be the smartest exit strategy that you ever have and i am personally going to be looking into it further and i will show you a couple of the over-the-counter exchanges that you can go and and 
apply to begin trading down the road maybe or even now if you're big enough. But first, I wanted to go through the OTC market. This video may be longer like the way my videos used to be, but I'm going to pack it with a lot of information. I'm going to tie some things together that I think you'll find very interesting. Um, this is from Wikipedia. Now, this is referencing traditional markets, um, but this also applies to the crypto markets. The OTC off or off exchange trading is done directly between two parties without the supervision of an exchange. It is contrasted with exchange trading, which occurs via exchanges. A stock exchange has the benefit of facilitating liquidity, providing transparency and maintaining the current price. In, and remember this, in an OTC trade, the price is not necessarily published for the public. That is very important. The price is not published for the public. And I want to tell you one thing before I move on from that little definition of OTC. Think about all of the institutional players that we have heard this year about getting in while this market, while what we see in the market on coin market cap. Let's look at it. While we see this 210 billion, all we've heard is about institutions jumping into this. We've heard about endowments from Yale to Harvard. We've heard, we've heard about um, all sorts of big money that's been coming into the market this year, and we have not seen it reflected in that price. And I'm here to tell you what you see, uh, it's just a matter of time before that gap is bridged between what you see and what is actually the reality of the situation. And the reality is, is that these OTC, these people in the OTC have been buying left and right. That's the real truth. And I'm going to go through all of this for you. First thing I wanted to show you, I looked this up. Um, this is an article from the September 13th of 2018. And it's, it basically just kind of goes through how OTC trading is impacting the Bitcoin price. And I'm, I found a few articles and I just want to give you I went through the articles and found what I thought were the most important snippets. And this is from this article here. The OTC market is, therefore, a great source of information for investors, as well as a good reference point, point where the price of Bitcoin is really trading. Since exchanges primarily service retail traders, you could argue that the, quote, real price of Bitcoin is found in the OTC market where large investors are cross crossing trades in the hundreds of millions. And I, I want to go back again. Um, right now, you may feel like you're a smaller person or a smaller investor, and you may feel like you're a retail investor. But I say to you right now that there are many people, if you're listening to this, you are most likely in the top 1% of the world in terms of being early to crypto. And there's no reason in the world that you could very well be one of these people that's trading in the OTC markets in the coming year, two years. And so this is something you need to be aware of. Uh, the, the people trading in these markets, they have advantages that retail investors do not have. And so you need to be aware that you could be one of these people sooner rather than later you're in the top if you're listening to this you're in the top one percent of investors in the world in terms of being educated on what's going on because we're way ahead of the game um okay next i found there, there was uh, another this is about circle this is an article that was back uh, in april of 2018 about south circle trade circle which is the company um that owns Poloniex, but Circle is also Goldman Sachs is an investor in Circle, okay, just to make all this uh, understood. In this article, they are talking to um, Jeremy Allaire, who is the uh, one of the CEO of, of uh, Circle, and they're talking about how the institutional market and how the OTC market has been, how huge it's been this year. So this is, this is uh, from this article. OTC services are designed for high net, high net worth individuals and institutions that want to make large crypto trades 
without upsetting the market. And according to certain, now I find that funny, by the way, without upsetting the market, is it upsetting the market that they're worried about? Or is it, do they want their own little gig that insulates them from the rest of the people? Okay, without upsetting the market. And according to Circle Trade's chief executive, Jeremy Allaire, in an interview with Business Insider, the size of the OTC orders has grown since the beginning of the year. Even as the 24-hour volume on retail exchanges has dropped to about $20 billion a day, from highs of about $70 billion at the start of the year. The average OTC order, he says, is now almost $1 million U.S. dollars, with some exceeding $1 million, $100 million U.S. dollars. And then he says, quote, the watermark will continue to rise. Now, why does he think that? Um, and then... Now, I'm taking you through this, and in almost every shot, there's a picture of a whale because the OTC, the people trading OTC, are the whales. And my contention is that many of you will be the OTC whales sooner rather than later. This article is talking about how huge the OTC market is, and, and um, this is where the real whales trade. There's a, a research group called the TAB Group that's talked about in this article. It says TAB Group, an international research group, has disclosed, disclosed an extensive analytical report that, over the, uh, that the over-the-counter market of Bitcoin is significantly larger than the global Bitcoin exchange market. This week, TAB Group claimed that the OTC market of Bitcoin is at least two to three times larger than the exchange market. Now remember, the exchange market is $210 billion. What that says to me, if we're in a, if, if, if institutions and all of these huge uh, organizations that are trading OTC have been buying like crazy, which is what we've been told is going on behind the scenes all year, and the market is two to three times larger, does that not mean that our true market is into the 800 or so billion and it's just a matter of time before this is all bridged? 800, remember, 800 or so billion is what we were at back in December when things were hopping. Now, put that 800 billion and then add the hype that would come from retail as well as hype from OTC if all of a sudden CNB starts talking about how we're in a huge market and then you go past a trillion quickly. Okay, it says uh, it, from this, this is still tab. Given that the Bitcoin exchange market uh, pro processes around $4 billion worth of trades per day, if TAB's assessment is accurate, the OTC market of Bitcoin is processing more than $12 billion worth of trades on a daily basis. And now I'm going to get you to the article that someone sent me yesterday. And this was in an email. I'm not going to name anybody's name who sent it to me. But I missed this article. But this is where I believe the, the bridge from OTC um, to the retail, the brokerages, is going to begin to be bridged. And I'm going to read you a few quotes from this article so you'll understand what my thinking is here. I believe that Goldman Sachs is kind of working with BACT, and Goldman Sachs is, is, is uh, well, I'll just read you what this what it says and you it'll it'll all come together in your mind like it did in mine from the article plenty of rumors have been circulating about initiatives that Goldman Sachs has been taking to establish a cryptocurrency product considering their hot and cold attitude however the trading desk became a custody services option that would allow clients to store Bitcoin Goldman has been aware all along of the institutional offerings that were coming their way. During this time, they've been examining the best option for supporting their digital asset offerings, and that seems to be backed. I've been talking to you all about backed over and over. I cannot tell you enough about the symbolism of what backed coming in means. Back to the article. All of the pipes, levers, and factories that are being constructed to process billions of crypto trades per day will eventually all work together. Backed, Fidelity, NASDAQ, ErisX, all of them will eventually clear trades from a place like Goldman Sachs on a daily basis. 
These firms are just providing access and regulatory insurance via custody and some warehousing services. Goldman choosing to work with BAC is a nice headline today, but may be irrelevant by late 2019. However, rather than allowing BAC to, to be seen as a new product for industry, Goldman believes that it is simply an extension of the nice. I'm going to say that again. Goldman believes that BAC is simply an extension of the nice. In other words, Goldman believes that, that BAC is simply an extension of the, of the not New York Stock Exchange's liquidity. There's an, an, an extension, not just the extension of the liquidity, but also an extension of the New York Stock Exchange's um, lack of risk. And don't forget that. It, the, in the minds of the investing public and of the people that are trading on the OTC now that only trust the OTC instead of being out here on the exchanges, this will be the bridge. This will be the bridge. It will be not only a liquidity bridge, but it will be a, a bridge of in the mentality of not just the average Joe investor, investor, but the rich investor. And it will bridge, ultimately, the pricing Everything is going to be bridged when this happens. Continuing on, there's a lack of risk involved with the platform, um, unlike that of exchanges related to ICE like BitMEX, Bitfinex, and others. In other words, these, these uh, crypto exchanges by the wealthy would be seen as risky right now, which is why they're doing OTC. Backed will solve that. Back to the article, Goldman Sachs is taking it a step further. They're advising their clients to stay away from exchanges like those listed above. Now think about this. Goldman Sachs deals with the wealthiest people in the world, and they are advising all of the wealthiest people in the world not to stay away from cryptocurrency like you might see them say in an article that's misleading and intentionally misleading. They're telling their, their, their wealthy clients no, they're not saying don't invest in crypto. What they're saying is, yeah, invest in it, but do it through OTC. In other words, all the, the table's being set. The table is being set. They're all getting their ducks in a row. And meanwhile, they're writing articles about how scary Bitcoin is uh, for those of us that are on the exchanges trading to read and get scared. Drive those prices down. Get them ready to come in with back. All right. I'm, in, I'm reading along here. Um, uh, lost my place here. Okay. Goldman Sachs has taken a step further, advising their clients to stay away from the exchanges like those listed above, like BitMEX, Bitfinex, due to regulatory and AML reasons. They'd rather clients stick with the off-book OTC crypto network, which spans the U.S., Asia, and Eastern Europe. With BACT's ecosystem, Goldman Sachs will be able to establish a narrative for the cryptocurrency industry that is significantly more stable and less risky for users. So there you go. And now I want to show you a couple of the OTC um, platforms because you and I could very well, very likely be trading in the OTC down the road because OTC will not disappear with BACT. Now, I think BACT will be very, very liquid um, as time goes along, but it could, it could take a while to phase in. Many of you listening to this are so early to the party that you might just go get out from BACT and, and that's that, and you've made all the money you ever could have dreamed of having anyway. But many of us, like myself, I plan on being in this game for quite a while because I think the world's about to change and I'm going to be there. And those OTC people will know my name um, and they'll probably know a lot of yours, too. Well, first, I want to show you this is Circle Trade. This is the company Circle, which I told you a minute ago. Goldman Sachs is an investor in Circle and Circle bought Poloniex as well. So. Circle Trade is a uh, cryptocurrency platform for OTC, um, and they have desks in Boston, New York, London, Hong Kong. Two billion in monthly trading volume. We trade billions in crypto assets every month. Direct trades from 250,000. So I guess that's their minimum. Um, and then there's another, Genesis. And, and take note, I, I should direct your attention, Genesis 
is owned or, or an invest. It's well, no, it's owned by a digital currency group company. Digital currency group. Barry Silbert is the CEO of Digital Currency Group. Barry Silbert is probably the most powerful person in digital assets and in the cryptocurrency world. He ha he owns a piece of just about every company in crypto that you can name, including Ripple. Barry Silbert. This guy is huge. He's got his hands in everything. And if you follow him on Twitter, every once in a while, he'll tell you where this is all going. I mean, he, he doesn't he does not beat around the bush. He knows, and he knows because he knows what's going on in the OTC markets as well. Okay, moving along. And I wanted to point out a couple more things to you before I let you go. First, used to when you would go to Ripple's site, before they started separating themselves from XRP, used to, they would have this section up here. Now they've got an XRP buying guide. Used to, they would lit, these are the list if you want to make individual purchases, Bitstamp, Kraken, if you want to buy XRP, they list a lot of the exchanges that you can buy as a retail investor. What they do not show you on here, used to, you could buy uh, institutionally, like larger purchasers could go directly to Ripple to buy XRP. Now, that is being someone else's. I mean, there are some of these OTC platforms, I'm sure, um, have tons of XRP that they're selling at the larger scale. Why do I know that? Because this article that was from uh, not too long ago, the uh, you remember, institutional investors are buying XRP at a record rate, Ripple CEO. This was when back when Brad Garlinghouse was talking about in Q3. Here's a quote. One of the things I will tease for a future announcement, we'll do it, the Q3 XRP pre-markets report, which we always share, where we're seeing institutional participation in buying XRP Q3 will definitely be a record for institutional participation in buying and interest in holding XRP. I think that makes it pretty clear, does it not? And finally, I want to end. The guy that does the uh, crypto uh, crypto show uh, for CNBC, Rand, N N I always can't ever remember how to say his name, Rand Nooner. Um, this was a tweet that he sent out yesterday. Back. TDM, Meritrade, Passport and Capital, Yale Endowment, Fidelity, BlackRock, Nice, Goldman's. You really think they're investing in the space with $200 billion in mind? They know it's very temporary and that over a trillion is coming soon. My contention to you today is that in the real market, if all of the real truth were known, that right now crypto is an $800 billion to $1 trillion market right now. I believe that when you see back to coming online and you see all of the green lights given to the institutions and, and, and everyone is told that it's safe, I believe you will see a bridging of the OTC. It will never be completely bridged because the rich will always have an advantage. But you will see the bridging somewhat over time, maybe probably slowly, of the OTC and the retail market and it will be a more clear market. And I believe that I, I, there's not a one part of me that doesn't believe that right now your XRP is worth between $350 and $5. Not even a part of me. And that's why I hold, but I'll be here for a much longer time because I'm going to see you in Liechtenstein. I want to show you one other thing. Um, I just got an email this morning. The Ledger Nano S will be on sale. They sent me an email this morning. It'll be on sale for four more days. You get 20% off. This thing is normally $100. They've got it at $79.99 right now. So if any of you have been sitting on the fence, and I'll tell you, um, I have a Ledger Nano S. My, I got my family members to get Ledger Nano S. And I'm not telling you to do something that I nor my own family members don't do. What this is, it's a Ledger hard wallet. It allows you to store your digital assets offline so that no one, so that hackers can't steal them off of an exchange. If you're going to be holding these digital assets for the long term, which you need to, um, you're part of a world change. And so don't risk it by storing your digital assets on these exchanges. I'm the digital asset. And oh, by the way, if you want the Ledger Nano S, it's in the description of every single one of my videos. It's the safe way. It will take you straight to their website. 
you can buy one and it'll they'll send it right to you. Um, I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. I want you to subscribe and hit the like button and also tell your friends and family about my channel because I'm the digital asset investor and I will see you in Liechtenstein. And these OTC markets will know my name and they'll probably know many of yours. Thanks for listening.